Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protects multi-site node replication. This feature was introduced in version 8.1.13, and you can now replicate a Spectrum Protect server's nodes or file spaces out to up to two different target Spectrum Protect servers. This is being accomplished now using storage rules and sub rules, which will help control the granularity of what is replicated to which Spectrum Protect target server. And so we've introduced two different action types for these storage rules, um, action type replicate and action type no replicate. You no longer need to use the protect storage pool command. These storage rules and sub rules will replace that. You still can do a automatic restore from these different target servers if your primary Spectrum Protect server fails. The nodes will automatically fail over and try sequentially the other Spectrum Protect servers to restore their data from. You can also still issue a repair against a damaged storage pool and have that data pulled back from where it was replicated to. In this demo, our developer Jonathan Cummings will walk you through the command line implementation of multi-site node replication. He will replicate his server one out to server two and server three. He'll be setting up storage rules and sub rules to replicate different nodes and different file spaces to those servers. He'll also show you how to run a repair after he has purposely damaged his primary storage pool. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jonathan. All right, I'm going to show a new feature, which is multi-target replication. It's going to leverage an existing structure that we use for a couple other things in storage rules. If you've done tiering or copy to tape from a directory pool, you're likely familiar with the storage rules and sub rules. The way we do multi-target replication is using the same concept. And we've introduced a couple new action types to separate out the replication from copy and tiering. I've done a setup here. I have three servers running. So I'm just going to show what I've done as a, a pre-setup here. So I'm going to run query server. And we can see I have two servers defined, uh, my CBA server 2 and CBA server 3. These tabs up here, are they correspond to those servers. And then I have three nodes and one, two, and three, I'm all going to a directory container pool just to show off some of the new underlying engine that directory container pools um, use now in this new multi-target replication model. In previous versions, the guidance was to run protect storage pool for your directory container pools before running replication. This is no longer necessary, I and mean, we don't lose anything by not doing protect storage pool. We'll still be able to run repair storage pool as normal, so there's nothing to worry about there. It just makes it a little easier to schedule especially going to a two target servers. It's a lot harder to plan out two protect storage pools and two replicate node commands to all run in a scheduled window. We've eliminated the need for protect storage pool, and now we don't run the replicate node command any longer. We just use these storage rules. So I'm going to go ahead and show, I got some data backed up. So I'll query my FS counts and give it a splat. I got three nodes and one, two, and three. Each one has two file spaces. And that's just to show some of the granularity we can get into later. My first step's going to be, I got my servers defined. I got some data. So I'm going to define a storage rule, find storage rule. Then I'm going to give it a name of REPL server two. Doesn't really matter what you name it as long as you know what it means. And then for the next parameter, I'm going to specify the server name that I want to be replicating to. So in this case, I'm going to do CBA server two. And then to denote that this is replication, action type equals replicate. So my storage rule was defined. And so the default here is um, when you define a storage rule, you just specify replicate. I mean, you don't have any sub rules underneath it. That's going to default to replicating every node and every file space to the server that you specified. So it's default on for everything. To show off how you can change that a little bit, I'm going to define a sub rule under this. So I'm going to do define sub rule. I'm going to take this REPL server 2 to specify that this sub rule is under that storage rule. And then I got to give the sub rule itself a name. So I'll just copy the the storage rule name and I'll put sub one. And then the third parameter here is going to be a list of nodes or node groups I want this sub rule to apply to. So I'm just going to say my node N3. And then like with the storage rules, the sub rules also need an action type. So in this case, since we have a storage rule of replicate um, and I want to stop 
exclude node N3 from this operation, I'm going to do action type equals no REPL. If I query sub rules for this storage rule and give it a format equals detailed, we can see the action type is no replicating. And the sub rule members is just N3. And this dash denotes um, all file spaces. So if I had, had specified a particular file space, you'd see it listed there. I'll show that in a minute. Now, with storage rules, we have a built-in concept of scheduling, so you can set a, a time. So let me show the storage rule I have. You can see the start time is set, and you can also put a duration for how long you want it to be able to run before it gets canceled. But I haven't set any. In this case, I'm going to use the start storage rule command to start this one off. Type in start storage rule, and I'll give the storage rule name. So if we query process, we can see this is starting up. It's going through the process of determining which files need to be replicated. So that's why it says zero of zero. You can see it's now identified almost 12,000 files to replicate. We'll just wait here a minute while this uh, processes, and then we'll take a look at server two. Most of it's been transferred, and now it's just verifying all the files are fully replicated. So we see this amount replicated growing. Okay, so now it's gone. You can see in the console here that it was successful. And it says that replication storage rule, REPL server two was running in the background and it processed 11,698 items. Um, and you can see in the message above, it's a little more detailed. It shows that replication of node N1 and N2 completed. So we don't have N3 uh, because of that sub rule. We jump over to server two's admin command prompt. We can do the QFS counts. And you'll see here we have both file spaces for N1 and N2, but there's nothing here for N3, as expected. If we didn't have that sub rule of action type no REPL, then we'd see all three here. So the, the whole main point of this is to go to a second server as well. I'm going to have to define a separate storage rule, obviously, to do that. So I'm going to do define storage rule. I'm going to name this one REPL server 3. Again, you can name it whatever you like. Go into my CBA server 3, not 2 this time. And this time, I'm going to switch things up a bit. Action type equals no REPL. So like we saw on the sub rule before, we can use no REPL to exclude. If I define this, this storage rule is going to do nothing at this point. So I can, I can show that by just starting it real quick. And yeah, we should see that no replication eligible data was found because we said don't replicate. So this in itself is useless. Use case for this is to define a storage rule with no REPL, and then you can define a sub rule under it. So I'll do define sub rule, give it the name of the storage rule I want it to be under. And I'll name it REPL server 3 sub 1, node N3, and action type equals REPL. Okay, so I can take a look at the sub rule now, put in the name of the storage rule. So we can see here, this sub rule is going to replicate when I run the storage rule, the parent storage rule, and it's only going to replicate uh, node N3. I'm going to go ahead and try to show off some of the file space granularity. Just to show it again, we have all three nodes have two file spaces. So by defining this first sub rule, I'm saying I want node N3 and all of its file spaces to be uh, replicated to server three. It's going to replicate both data two and the, just the data file space here. So I'm going to define a couple other sub rules for the other nodes. So I'll do define sub rule again. We'll take that storage rule name and we'll give this one a, a sub two name. And then I'll say I want it to apply to node N1, action type equals REPL file space equals data two. And then I'm going to do the same thing for node N2, change the sub rule name here. Okay, so now if I take a look at the sub rules for this storage rule, server three, we can see there's three of them. They're all action type replicate, all the data types. We see the first one has N3 and using the dash to denote all file spaces. And then the, the two other sub rules are showing N1 and N2 are the only going to be the data to file space. So obviously this can be scheduled just like the other. We don't have time to wait for that. So I'm just going to start the storage rule up here. So this should start replicating these members that we see in the sub rules to server three. Start it off, do a query process. And we can see it's already starting to identify. And it shows that N3, N1, and N2 are all being replicated, um, which is expected because we have a rule that incorporates each one of those. You can see the, the files uh, replicated count is a little lower, and that's because we're excluding a couple file spaces here. Shortly, we should see this finish up, transfer all the data, and then we can take a look at server three, see what the result was. Okay, finish up. Take a look at the console again, scroll down. 
So we can see this time in the more detailed message, we see replication of node N3, N1, N2 completed. And that's because we we replicated at least the one file space from each of those. We can see our file count's a little lower than previously, and the data's uh, slightly smaller too. We can jump over to server three now, and we can do uh, query FS counts star. And you'll see here we have, as expected, we have N3. We didn't specify a file space, so we got both of them here. And then N1 and N2 have the data to file space only. That's basically it for multi-target replication. You can get a lot more creative with your rules than I had. But another really neat feature is the fact that we're not having to do protect storage pool anymore. So this lets you be a lot more granular. There's been some pain points with protect storage pool, mainly trying to schedule it and replicate node to run one after the other isn't always the easiest thing to do. Also, if you have data in a directory container pool and you only want to replicate, say, 50% of the nodes in that that correspond to that pool. And with protect storage pool, it has to protect the whole pool or nothing. The introduction of these replication storage rules, we've eliminated that. As you saw, I did not run protect storage pool, but I can show how we can repair. So I'm going to just do something you would never want to do, and I'm going to log into my, my source server here. So I'll go into the three where my containers live. So we can see I have three ddupe and one non-ddupe container in here on the source server, and I'm just going to delete them. So the data is all gone on the source server. For the source server to recognize that, I'm going to run audit container, and I'll get it dpool one, which is my directory container storage pool. So this should run relatively quickly. It's just going to see the, the containers are gone and mark all the chunks bad. I'm going to do a query damage, give it the storage pool name. So we can see here I have 15,000 non-dedupe and a little over 15,000 dedupe extents that are damaged. There's a new parameter for repair storage pool. It's called server. Pretty self-explanatory what that means. Previously, you would have on the storage pool, we could take a look. You will have protection storage pool. You can see I have it set to nothing. Normally, to run protect storage pool, you need to have that set to say what the storage pool is on the target server. And then that's also how repair knows uh, what pool to look in to pull the data from. Also, you would have to do a set repl server command for the protect and repair to know which server to pull that from. The repair storage pool server parameter makes that all irrelevant. Go ahead and run repair storage pool for dpool1 server equals CBA server2. So my, my first target that I replicate it to. So I'll kick that off. This is going to take a little bit to run. We can see in the console, we're starting to get some extents uh, recovered. At this point, we're not going to expect everything to be repaired from this one server because I'm not replicating everything to this one server. Because I excluded, we can take another look at it, REPL server 2 sub rules. I had no replicating for N3 for this server. So any extents that are exclusively part of the N3 file set will not be able to be repaired because they don't exist on server 2. So we'll wait for this command to complete and we'll see how much damage we have at that point. Okay, so it looks like finally finished up here. I mean, and you can see we repaired 20,335 of about 30,000. Makes sense because we have three nodes that were all roughly the same amount of data. I and mean, we only replicated two of them to the server. So about two thirds of the extents were repaired and uh, the other third uh, failed. So since these extents failed, we can see that the process ended in failure. Jump back over to the admin prompt. We can query damage for the pool again. You can see it's, it's roughly spread half and half again between non-dedupe and dedupe. So to get these repaired, we need to run a repair storage pool to a server that has the N3 data. So we'll do repair storage pool, people one, server equals CBA, server three. So this is going to take a little bit again. Start seeing these messages again, showing that things are being repaired. Again, these are being pulled from the third server, from our second target, CBA server three, where N3 was uh, replicated to. Okay, so it looks like it ended. Let's check the log. The 10,172 that failed up from the from repairing from the CBA server two were successfully repaired from CBA server three. Extents failed to zero, the amount repaired in kilobytes, and then it ends in success. Now that every extent is fixed, we can see we have no more damage. That's all I really needed to show for the repair storage pool command changes, as well as the replication storage rules. These replication storage rules are in no way limited to directory container pools, they, they also work with any other type of media too. So you can use file types, tape, or cloud, or whatever works best. Great. Thank you, Jonathan, for the demo. Be sure to check out the other demos I have on multi 
Site Node Replication.